Good morning, everybody. My hair looks very dark. I thought I'd vlog today. Um, I retoned my hair because it was just looking a little brassy. And I also hacked off a bit at the bottom <laughs> because I think salons are opening next week in the UK anyway, but I just thought the likelihood of getting me being bothered to get an appointment when I can kind of do it myself. So that's where we are. I thought I'd just freshen up uh, myself a little bit. So I just thought I'll put a dark toner on it, let that fade off um, and soften over time. So how are you all? Um, I have actually been struggling quite a bit. I don't want to be upset. I mentioned that I've gone back to work um, and I've just found it so difficult. <laughs> Um, the job itself is great. Outside of having a baby, it would be absolutely ideal. It's part-ish time. I just didn't really feel, I didn't, maybe I didn't understand, I didn't anticipate that it would feel like this much of a struggle to be working as a new mum with a small baby. And I don't know if that's me being like naive. I don't know what it is, but I, have a lot of thoughts now about being a working mum and it is just really really difficult it's everything it's like well it's starting a new job in a pandemic as well has been tough but starting a new job in a pandemic with a small baby when it's quite soon to be going back to work anyway has been extra tough and I just feel like a lot of the time I just feel like I've been like wading through mud like focus wise I'm just not quite there I, it's also highlighting how shit maternity leave was and how much I haven't been able to do. And now that everything's open up, I don't have that same time that I had. So that's just something. I think I'm kind of mourning a bit. <laughs> but I, I don't want to talk about it too much now because I don't want to get upset. I'm in a bit of a negative headspace this last week. But I thought I would come on and just start talking about it because I one thing I've learned every time I feel a struggle or something I talk about it to you guys and you there's always people that can relate and it makes me feel so much better also last night yesterday was just quite a heavy day because I don't know if anyone's been following this little baby called Azalea online and she was born about a week before Gabe and she's had leukemia um, so I've been quite invested in her journey um, which Hainsey tells me not to because it upsets me so much but I just, you know, I just can't not and anyway um, her parents put online yesterday that there's they're at the point now where there's nothing else that can be done so that just sort of tipped me over, over the edge yesterday <laughs> so yeah um, I'm feeling just I think with work Everyone kept saying to me, oh, it will get easier. You know, you'll get used to it, you'll adjust, but I, just, I don't feel like it is getting easier. So that's the only thing. I, feel. I think I'm just tired, I didn't really sleep last night. I slept in Gabe's room last night after this news of this poor little baby, because I just wanted to be close to him. So I don't want to um, start this vlog off upset. I am starting today by going for a walk with my mum friend Charlotte, who is just the tonic that I need really I haven't seen her for a while we I met her on this app called peanut and we went for walks like twice three times a week when it was like prime lockdown time and there was nothing else to do um, so she's been a real support through this whole thing she's also recently gone back to work and she's struggling so I don't feel so alone in those feelings um, but yeah, it's gonna, I think that's gonna be just the very thing I need this morning. But yeah, I'm just here with my little honey. And his little bottle. You wanna say good morning? There we go, there's my foot. <laughs> so yeah, obviously he's always a joy to be with. I'm going to make up a tea, pull myself together. I just thought I'd mention something on the subject of me struggling with work. You may have seen on my Instagram, I've set up a Slack group. Now, Slack is like an online messenger service thing that I use with work and have done in other jobs. And I saw, like this isn't an original idea, I saw Rachel Newin, who I follow, although I think she might be on a different platform, but a similar thing during the pandemic um, quite a while ago. And 
it was just for her community to chat in. And I suddenly thought the other day, I have had social media as such a source of support and advice throughout this whole thing. And I was just chatting with someone uh, in my DMs, I think I was talking about weaning. And I suddenly thought I'd love to bring this out of my DMs and into a communal space so that we can all talk together as mums because whenever I've posted on social, like on Instagram stories, I, I was asking about weaning and then loads of people messaged saying, oh, can you let me know the answers to this? And I've had that a few times when I've asked about sleep or play or anything to do with the baby. Everyone, a lot of people message after saying, oh, can you let me know what people say? And yeah, so I just thought I, I want a way to, as I say, bring this out of my DMs. <laughs> and have it as be a communal space. Anyway, so I've set up this Slack group and I've just gone on it this morning just to check and me talking about work. I've had a message from someone in the general chat where everyone is saying, I'm a first time mom to a 10 month old. I found the first few months really tough um, to get into a routine, but we got there. It's tough not living near family and friends and now I'm struggling with the thought of going back to work when he's one. I'll be working three days a week and he'll go to nursery, which is breaking my heart a bit. I'm dreading it. Can anyone else relate and tell me it gets easier? And that's why I started this group because I've just said, said to you how much I was struggling and now I've gone on and there's someone talking about it too. And so yeah, I just thought I'd mention it and say on here. So if anyone wants to join it, if you just send me your email address via Instagram probably is the best thing to do. I'll put my handle like here. And if you send me a DM with your email address, I can add you to this group. But this is what it looks like. And then we've got all these chats here about different things. So I've set one up for feeding. This is the general one, but pregnancy, sleep, newborn stage, the night feed, weaning. And we can set more up as we go. Who's this shouty boy? And we can set more up as we go, but yeah, I just thought I'd um, mention that one here because it's just been so nice to connect with so many new mums um, and especially throughout this year when we haven't really been able to have the support that we need. And there's so many women on there, like there's someone from Australia, there's someone living in Amsterdam, there's people from all over and we're all in a very similar situation. Some, some of us don't have any family near us um barely any support so it's been so nice to be able to set that up and like start bringing everyone together oh <clears throat> okay don't ask what my hair's doing i didn't quite want to tie up in a pony in a ponytail but i need to tie up because it's greasy so just ignore this um yes i'm just getting gabe dressed to go and meet my friend and it's funny i just picked up a jumper probably the same jumper that i've been wearing for literally the last week and I looked on the shoulder and they were sick and it's really funny because I was I wore that jumper yesterday and all day I was like I really feel like I can smell sick <laughs> obviously it's because it's on my shoulder and that's that is the reality of being a mum really the faint smell of sick wherever you go okay mom. I'm just about to show Gabe's outfit and I actually think he wore these leggings the last time I saw you so I'm sure he did <laughs> Um, but we've got this jumper from Zara, which we love. Um, it's got this little pocket here and it's really soft. It's actually a bit small for him now because he's got such a big boy. And then these M&S leggings and then I'll put some socks on him. Um, so there we go. Right, Gabe, are we ready? Yeah. Are we ready? Are we ready? This little croissant leg. Hey, gorgeous boy. Right, let's get him in the buggy and then we're going to head out. Okay, hair looks frizzy face looks dry but we move as the young and die. I'd, I've literally turned into a 40 year old housewife uh, since having Gabe. No that's a lie I was, I was always a 40 year old housewife at heart. Anyway um, good morning so you may have realised I sort of fell off a bit of a cliff yesterday as tends to happen these days. Um, obviously it didn't get off to the best start yesterday morning Apologies for that. Feeling much better today. Actually, no, I'm not going to apologise for that. I know you guys get it. Feeling much better today, though. Um, I've got mountains of washing to sort. Saw my friend Charlotte yesterday, and that was, as I said, the tonic that I needed. She's just, uh, like, it's just been great to have her, like, by my side, essentially navigating this, this motherhood lark. I feel like we met maybe October, so she's kind of been with me for, like, the bulk of my motherhood journey at this point. And yeah, she's just so great. 
in every way. Um, she and I spoke to my sister yesterday, who's also a mum, were able to give me some really great perspective. I just need to hang these up. It's, we, as we know, you know, it's good to talk always. I feel like, um, obviously, being able to speak to people that are going, have gone through what you are at this stage, is really helpful to give perspective because that's so key to be able to get when you're in this headspace um and essentially you know feelings around work and struggling are just so common at this point at any point of your life basically but specifically around being a mum and I think I think I just feel like I'm not doing anything particularly well and I and I really struggle with that and I, but I've always been career minded more out of necessity as opposed to actually having real clear career goals that's probably quite clear from the fact that I've chopped and changed quite a lot throughout my working life oh I just dropped that on the floor but I think on the wider scale the struggle is for new mums because you hear every everything's valid when it comes to being mum but I think there is a pressure especially now with social media, as there is always, because you do hear about, you know, oh, she had a baby a week ago and then she started her own business and now it's worth like 50, 100 million pounds. And you, you hear all these massive, massive success stories of mums having babies, but then, you know, very much having like this, going back to their old life or being able to, you know, be a CEO or all this kind of stuff, which is, you know, amazing. That is the point of us having choice and I wholeheartedly support that. But I also think that it's important to recognise what's, what success looks looks like, I hate this like business speak, what success looks like to you. Because I think from, I can't speak for everyone, but I think when success is measured so much by your productivity, when you're out of that, i.e. having babies and raising a family, that can feel like you're not contributing, you're not doing, you just feel like you're never enough, I suppose, as a woman. <laughs> No, I don't want to go down that road, but do you know what I mean? I think you you just routinely feel like you're never enough, you're never doing enough, whatever situation you're in. And I think that definitely has been highlighted here because I, I think, particularly financially, when I feel like I can't contribute in the same way or I'm not contributing in the same way that I used to, that makes me not feel, I don't feel very, not worthy, but I, I link my confidence my worth to that quite a lot because I think you know I just always have been able to support myself a bit hit and miss sometimes but do you know what I mean and so I think then becoming a mum and your new prior well you can't prioritize that in the same way but you still have this necessity for it you have to finance yourself that then becomes difficult to accept when that's all you've been able to mark as your success you know the titles that you have the amount that you make but success is also devoting yourself to your family and creating a beautiful environment for that to flourish and working on creating a foundation for that to flourish. And, you know, we're raising the next generation. What more important job is there? So I think it's me just kind of changing the narrative in my head around that. And I hope, and that, you know, I. It is something I do believe, but I think I'm, I was surprised at how much that affected me, I guess. And now, I'm having gone back to work, like I've been saying, I'm surprised at how much that has affected me. <laughs> so I'm just really quite affected. But essentially, the consensus is don't put too much pressure on yourself. Try and identify what exactly you can do. And just, put, just try and put yourself first. Um, mental health isn't worth it like sacrificing your mental health isn't worth anything um, and talk to people, ask for help, all of those things it's so important to recognise just how your capacity has changed, how your priorities have changed and how you can best support that to make yourself feel good, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I don't know if that's made any sense but that's where my head is this morning so <laughs> there we go. So, But anyway, overall I'm feeling much more positive and much better and that has come from speaking to the lovely people in my life who I'm able to have love and support me. Do you know what? I'm actually talking and I'm just moving the clothes around. I've realised I'm not actually putting them away, so I'm going to stop doing that. Um, but yeah, on the Slack group, I've had women on there talking about how they're feeling anxious about going back to work. Um, their babies aren't one yet, but they're worried about when it comes to it and they have to go back to work. And again, that is 
that gives me comfort too that you know everyone feels like that Gabe is still very young he's seven months so I went back to work when he was six six and a half that's very early do you know what I mean so I just need to be easy on myself because most people do take a full year off and I'm you know understanding the necessity for that and why they do that so yeah I just thought it would be useful to talk about this open up the conversation just for anyone that is also feeling that struggle or, or worrying about that or is going through that at the moment we're all in this together and ev every feeling is valid basically is what I'm trying to say so I am going to actually put this washing away um, and sort my face out <laughs> uh, it's been a few hours since I last spoke with you I've just got a little glass of vino on the go Haynes he's doing bath time I'm going to do bedtime um, but whilst he's doing bath time I like to just sort of have a little relax on the sofa I'm going to have a look at this I bought the What Mummy Makes book uh, for Gabe's weaning journey. I've seen so many great recipes um, on Instagram and they always tag this book. So I'm quite excited to get stuck in. It's got some, oh, it's got some lovely looking things. Look at that. Oh, little breakfast buffet. Um, so I actually think this is just fallen open, but I think I'm going to do these for breakfast tomorrow. Banana pancakes. I think we didn't have a very exciting breakfast this morning because I, I'm not really sure what happened. I feel like I left his breakfast too late and then I just couldn't really like focus on making anything. So we just had boring porridge and um, fruit puree, which is like a weekday rubbish breakfast. So I feel quite bad that I didn't do a nice special weekend breakfast for him this morning. So I'm gonna do one of those tomorrow because it's Sunday. Oh, hello, I've got a piece of hair. I feel like I have more to say actually at this point, but obviously don't I if I can just direct you to this highlighted video here on YouTube it's on British Vogue I watched it yesterday with Vanessa Kirby and Pippa Vosper um, and I actually wanted to just chat about it because Van Vanessa Kirby I absolutely love she was in The Crown um, she played Princess Margaret but she's also in this other film called Pieces of a Woman which I highly recommend although it's about baby loss it's very graphic, it's very raw, it's tragic. Um, if you wanted to watch that, I would highly recommend it, but do prepare yourself because it's very raw from the beginning, like literally as soon as you turn it on. I fell even more in love with her after watching that. And outside of the very serious subject matter of that film, great selection of sweaters that she wears throughout. So it's worth also watching for that. I watched this video yesterday and I mentioned about Baby Azalea and <laughs> Uh, all this stuff and um, that how that kind of just finished me off and then I watched this last night and that also finished me off and Hazy was like why do you do this to yourself but I just love Vanessa Kirby and I didn't realise this video would be as um, sad as it was either because they do talk about baby loss Pippa Vosper um, lost a baby in the most tragic every baby loss is tragic um, but yeah she lost a baby in a very traumatic way and um, it kind of got me thinking, I meant to speak about, um, a, a like, ki kind of about if I was to have a second baby, because I keep meaning to make an appointment to go and talk about my birth, because I've mentioned before, I'm not exactly clear on what happened and why. Um, a lot did happen, if you haven't watched my birth story, I'll link it, but a lot happened in a very short space of time, it was a very quick birth, eight hours from start to finish, from the, my waters breaking to gay being born, was eight hours. Um, and I dilated very, very quickly. Um, my waters broke at half 12 at night and I was fully ready to go by about 3 a.m. Um, when the ambulance, we called an ambulance. Um, and really the only reason he didn't like fall out of me is because he got stuck. So I have a few queries around my uh, birth specifically because I'm pretty sure that I was probably quite dilated even before we got to that point, I'd had what I thought was Braxton Hicks maybe a week or so before. Um, and I'd had some kind of um, like light uh, pinky sort of discharge. I hate saying that word. <laughs> um, in the week kind of leading up. And I remember Googling it and 
and seeing that it was called this thing called effacement which is your cervix thinning ready to give birth however it's quite early um and watching this story so pippa vosper what happened to her was she had damaged her cervix from her first birth and it was physically too weak to carry her second baby which resulted in the worst outcome you could imagine so it kind of just got me thinking i'm sure it's fine but because I wish that they checked me when I first went to the hospital because I'm quite sure I probably would have been, if not fully dilated, definitely halfway at that point for it to have happened as quick as it did. And I rather think I was probably a bit dilated. You can be like one or two centimetres dilated for a, a week or so before you give birth. And I'm quite sure that when I had that like discharge and I had those pains, that possibly that was the beginning of it. Um, so it's just watching that has not concerned me but i feel like i definitely want to go make this appointment now to talk about my birth and i want to see if there's a way that they can check if my cervix is weak or damaged because could that possibly be why gabe came early because if that is the case he came at 37 weeks so if i was starting to dilate before then it would be 36 weeks and anything from 37 is classed as full term so but I just, I don't know, I just feel a bit concerned that he could have come a bit earlier. And so therefore with the second baby, as I've already had a baby, is there any damage there? And could that happen again? Because they always say, they, people say that with your second baby, uh, it will be a lot quicker than the first. So if that happens, I could just be giving birth at home. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not pregnant by the way, and we're not planning on their second one anytime soon, but... These things just, you know, raise a concern in your head. I think it's good to be aware of the things that could possibly happen so that you can then be a bit more empowered and in control. And like, I can go and be like, could this be something that I worry about? And I'm sure they'll probably say, just wait until you get pregnant and then address it. And I'll make sure that, you know, if that happens again, hopefully, fingers crossed, if I am able to be pregnant again, uh, I will be kind of saying that and making sure they know that he came early and how quick it was. Uh, because yeah hearing her story has just made me think oh my god imagine so do you, you know what i mean you just feel like you want to do everything you can to prevent any sort of outcome um but i don't know why i'm thinking about that so deeply at this point or telling you it's just something i was thinking um but basically i'm going to make that appointment to go and talk about my birth to get it straight in my head all right i can hear that gabe's at the bath i've got to just tag in and do um mum duty and put him to bed I thought we've still got the hatch machine on so you can probably hear white noise. Oh, okay. That, you've got like a really, like one strand of hair, that really hurt. Put your fingers <laughs> actually up my nose. <laughs> um, yeah, it's Sunday morning. Obviously we've just woken up. Um, he actually sleeps in his cot over there. And then I come in, um, usually around 6am. That's my earring. <laughs> he will stir sometimes and so then I'll just grab him and cuddle over bed and that will keep him asleep till about seven. <sighs> sometimes half seven but I think it's ten past seven now. The last, actually no last night I didn't but the two nights before I actually slept in this bed all night with him because I was like having a bit of a breakdown and I just wanted to be near my little baby. Oh my, you literally just brought a <laughs> strong to bed. Right, we're gonna get up now aren't we? Are we gonna get up? <laughs> okay. It's Sunday. I've already said that, haven't I? Sunday. It's a beautiful day. Blue skies and sunny. Much better than yesterday. So we've got the food shop coming this morning. That's always exciting. I get my food shop delivered on a Sunday morning. Um, and Sainsbury's do saver slots. I don't know if this is of interest to anyone except me. So you just pay one pound and then you choose like a time slot so I chose between 7 and 11 I think it is and it's getting delivered between half 8 and half 9 absolutely ideal um, and yeah whenever I've chosen these saver slots it, it, I've always lucked out and got a, 
at the earlier part of the slot. But I picked 7 to 11 because even if it comes at 11, that's still fine. Anyway, so yeah, big shop day is always um, is always a good day. Um, and there we go. That's all I have to say on Sunday morning. Someone has started sitting very forward when I put him in his bouncer chair. Sit forward like a sitting forward boy. Hello, you. You're sitting up like a big baby boy. Is it you? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Look at him sleeping on his side like a big boy. <laughs> My angel. Good morning, everyone. It's been a week exactly. I think since I last vlogged. I did vlog today to just kind of wrap things up really and hopefully get this up today. Um, I'm just getting myself ready because it is Sunday as I just said and I am booked for lunch at the pub with my friend um, and I'm taking Gabe with me. It's our first excursion in this way probably since he was born. When he was born we were able to go out because we were, we were free for like the first two months so I did like meet some people for coffee and uh, I don't think we ever went out for like lunch maybe Hainsey and I went out for dinner with him once but anyway um, I haven't done this kind of thing that often and it's very daunting um, you forget that this is the normal thing that people with babies do but because we've been in a pandemic the thought of going out and like messing up the routine is just the most daunting thing ever whereas in normal life people just get on with it um, it's timed quite well with when he would be having his lunch. So yeah, it's the first time I'm going to be taking him out and like feeding him out, like feeding him food out. Um, so I've got to repack our nappy bag because I haven't had to pack it <laughs> again, really since he was born. Uh, so I've got to do that. I know for a fact that there's clothes that are way too small in there and nappies that are way too small in there because that's how long it's been. I'm just putting my face on. I'm still using, still obsessed actually with the Glossier Skin Tint and the concealer. It's very much my go-to, low maintenance, don't want to look like I've been dragged through a bush face. So I have a link below and you can get £10 off, I think, if you shop through it on your first order. So feel free. I thought I'd just fill you in on where I'm at with everything. Um, I had a chat with work and they were so wonderful. And I basically... I was kind of saying earlier like it's just about being honest with yourself and I basically had to be honest with them and say this is just too much. I am technically part-time but the role that I'm doing is actually a full-time role so it's really fitting a full-time role into part-ish time hours. I'm as, I'm as part-time as you can be without being full-time so basically like the equivalent to like four days and it's just way too much so I just had to be honest with them and say this is too much. They've been amazing, so understanding. Um, so we've come up with a way that I can still help them out, but on a very part-time basis. Um, I feel really lucky that they've been so supportive in that um, respect and so understanding. Part of me felt really bad because I really felt like I'd let the side down for working mums because I was just playing into the stereotype of a working mum that can't concentrate on anything except her baby. <laughs> um, and also it's just being honest with myself about the way I like to work and what makes me happy. So I've actually started doing hair as well this weekend because we are allowed to uh, open as hairdressers. And I think that's made me feel so much better because also I was also worrying because of the lockdown and not being able to do hair, that was another thought in my mind. Like, how is that gonna work? Am I ever gonna be able to do hair properly again because of this virus? Like, I just wasn't really sure. It seemed very uncertain. Um, so that was another reason why taking on a job in this way was more of a comfort because I just didn't know what was going to happen with hair. But getting to do it again is made me feel really excited about doing it and able to focus on it. So I've kind of got the best of both worlds at this point because I am able to stay with the company on a part time basis that I've started with, but also um, do hair as and when uh, I can. Um, and it's not this big pressure with either of them and that's so nice to be able to have so that I can then fit in you know being a mum around it and nothing really has to suffer. Okay outfit of the day to go and meet our auntie Coco. 
We've got this knitted jumper. This is all tiny trove. So this knitted jumper is tiny trove. So are these ribbed joggers. Okay. And then these little booties that my mum actually knitted for us, which keep coming off. But these are perfect where he isn't quite... Well, there's not much point getting him shoes. <laughs> and they, I mean, you can see they're just coming off. But like in the buggy or when I take him out, it's just a bit more substantial than just a sock um, for when we take him out of the buggy. So there we go. That's my gorgeous little bubba. Hello, angel boy. Do you want... Oh, you want to eat it? Oh, you can't, you can't put it in your mouth. This is what it's all about. <laughs> Okay everyone, um, I'm going to wrap this vlog up, It's I've just been editing it, it's very long, um, I am still a bit, little bit squiffy actually from the pub garden this afternoon. I've got some footage from it but to be honest you haven't really missed much, had a few drinks, now I'm back home, loving life, I'm going to end this vlog, uh, thank you so much for watching, it's so long, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you on the next vlog. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, you deserve a medal. And I'll see you on the next one. Mwah!